So, again, BF Yangs. You know, I wanted to talk about it's important. I'm always talking about some serious subject, um, you know, on every segment of my show. Um, and for one, nutrition and how parents are caring for their children. Um, I know that in the past we've talked about uh, food deserts uh, that are within the area or within the Twin Cities and different organizations such as Twin Cities Mobile Market, a wonderful organization that is based right here within the Dayton's Bluff um, area. Uh, They give an opportunity for individuals that don't have that maybe a vehicle or uh, a route of being able to get to a grocery store uh, and to obtain healthy or nutritious foods for their family. It really seems so much that there are, and there's nothing wrong with going to a fast food restaurant, but if that's the only thing that's like closest to you within your neighborhood or within your community, um, and it's so difficult to go to, um, go to a grocery store because not having a vehicle, um, certainly, you know, Twin Cities Mobile Market gives you that opportunity to really buy groceries. I mean, they have all different types of fruits, uh, vegetables, literally milk, cheese, breads. Yes, these are staples and so forth. Um, If you're trying to get a whole lot more specialty, then, you know, maybe there will be the extra effort that's needed um, to really, you know, find the way to uh, the grocer. You know, that would be. Again, we're talking about the difficulty of getting to one, but at least there are opportunities that are provided within your local community uh, that are conscious of these specific situations that um, the communities are concerned with or are dealing with and are how they're being affected. And in the past, uh, when we talked about uh, Twin Cities Mobile Market, you know, food deserts came up. And just as a reminder to let people know really what a food desert is, it's referred to as a geographical area that where affordable and nutritious food is hard to come by uh, or be obtained by um, those that are in the neighborhood uh, that don't have access to an automobile. Um, And, you know, like we were just briefly mentioning about fast foods, there's nothing wrong with it. But when that is the only thing that's in your area, these they pose a diet or health risk and problems. Um, And they also offer uh, disparities within the community because of the fact that, you know, parents, adults are not able to obtain those um, vegetables and and healthy foods for their children. Um, As important as we talk about uh, the obesity rate among youngsters, as well as adults, um, you know, it's important to start off at an early age. Uh, and make sure that you know we're we're giving them the healthy options. I mean, it is our responsibility um, to make sure that our our youths, our young ones, are uh, given the opportunity to start off on a healthy, balanced route. Um, yes, they can make their own choices a bit later on in life and so forth. But as parents, uh, as interested and concerned adults within the community. Um, you can definitely see that uh, there are options that are available. So um, definitely seek them out. Um, Again, more information. We can talk about that uh, a bit more. Um, And if you have comments or questions, please feel free to give me a call. You know, I think, as I mentioned before, we are doing a little switch up and I'm going to be very flexible right now. (laughs) So uh, I am, if there are any comments out there of folks that have, um, you know, something that they want to talk about in regards to uh, food deserts or how you're, uh, what kind of nutrition you're giving your children or feeding your family to make sure that they stay on uh, on a tr- on a appropriate track of of being healthy and uh, being on a nutritious path. Uh, feel free to give me a call six five one two zero zero three four seven nine. Again, that's six five one. Two zero zero three four seven nine. I'll start taking calls anytime anyone would like to call in, and we could talk on that subject. 
But in the meantime, uh, again, I wanted to move on to <laughs> food trucks. So, as you know, there was the food truck, Battle of the Food Trucks. Now, see, the Battle of the Food Trucks, if you're not familiar, Battle of the Food Trucks was in Maplewood um, Mall area. Well, their parking lot, I shouldn't say the area, but their parking lot. It was it was a great time. As a matter of fact, it was a great day. It was the sun was out. People came out uh, for a minute there last week Saturday. It looked kind of overcast, but come eleven eleven thirty, it turned beautiful <laughs> and it was awesome. So there was approximately twenty food trucks that were out there, and I have never been to an event like this. So I was really excited to go. Um, I've always enjoyed going to food trucks just in general. Uh, I think living in Los Angeles, we had food truck. I mean, I remember when food trucks were just coming out. They were called a different name that I'm not going to mention. Something with the word coach in it. (laughs) But anyway, I still enjoyed it. I mean, there were no there were no question or any type of hesitation when we went to a food truck and for Los Angeles, the majority of food trucks were, uh, Mexican food based or Latin, uh, cuisines. So I think that's probably where my love of tacos came from, but see, you know, that could also be a cultural thing because, you know, my parents are from central America and I moved down to I'd say Baja California, Mexico, if you want to say specifically Tijuana. Yeah. And I lived there for two and a half years. And again, I didn't feel any qualms or felt scared at all to enjoy food and cuisine from the food trucks. Um, So the opportunity to have different types of, of foods like here coming to this festival and having a wide variety of different types of foods that were available I mean I'll go into more details but there were tacos and empanadas and you know some desserts uh, shout out to uh, the original hockey mom's brownies man those I don't even, they were bigger than hockey pucks folks and thick <laughs> But again, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so let me just start off by saying that uh, with all of the food trucks that were there, there were a lot of people. Now, that is not to say that I wasn't expecting that. Uh, it was I think it was more that I was encouraged that people were really coming out and enjoying uh, this little festival. <laughs> Uh, and I don't know what year it, it it was or if this was done annually or how often uh, they've started this. But uh, if this was the first time, it was a good showing. Um, a number of the food trucks, you know, they had lines. Uh, that's not a bad thing because people stood in line. And, you know, I think with, with any consumer, if they feel that their food, uh, that a certain uh, vendor's food is good or great they're going to stand in line for a bit and that's what we were seeing Um, so I I didn't feel bad about standing in the line on certain ones on certain ones so the first one I want to talk about is kind of funny it's called bacon me crazy (laughs) I guess you heard me it's all about bacon yes there were other things that were there but you know you know that it's talking about specifically bacon because there's a little pig <laughs> on the side of the truck with you know all the other fixings and so forth that they offer but uh i think they had me at one point i walked up and saw their menu and i know it sounds wrong but it's it's called slap your mama <laughs> it it's not really even a dish all it is it's just it's bacon I mean, and for what, six dollars, they gave you such a heaping amount of thick cut bacon. I mean, these are strips of bacon that it was described as being thick cut, deep wood smoked and sugar cured bacon. And you're holding this thing like what 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 mountain of meat is this? <laughs> uh, but it was it was marvelous. I don't know if I would really have called it slap your mama, but, you know, it, it was bacon. So maybe 
push your mother aside or something. <laughs> I don't know. But it was it was a good it was a good it was a good um uh, side. And that was again just a side. Um the other items that uh, they had and the ones that I uh ate, if you would, there was bourbon bacon uh grilled cheese with tots. Now it was and I gotta say that throughout the entire um you know, all the food trucks and the vendors, um the prices were exceptional. They were not overly priced. Um I think that for the amount of food that they were um providing, um it was a it was a great price. Uh and for to start off with this first one, um it was five dollars. Again, it was a bacon uh, grilled cheese, bourbon bacon grilled cheese along with tots for five dollars. Now with this one it was okay because it was sourdough or I believe it was sourdough. Um, but then it had the, it was the grilled cheese and it had the bacon. Now, admittedly, as if I was, as I've always said, I'm not a food critic. I'm not one to be negative about uh, the food that a vendor or even a restaurant is presenting. I'm just talking about my food experience and how I felt um, either the food tasted or whatnot. In this instance, it was great, but um, I think it probably needed a bit more cheese and maybe a bit more bacon. And, you know, some the friends that I, were with me, they, they agreed. I mean, they mentioned it and then, you know, we were we each took a bite or had a piece. And so we, we kind of came to a general sen- census of that particular dish. Yeah. Probably not one that we would probably get again. The food is not, it's not bad at all. I think it's just um, what we were expecting was more of the grilled cheese uh, and more of the bacon. But awesome, you know, bacon me crazy. Yeah, they're, they're top notch food. The next one, though, <laughs> I got to admit uh, it's still a bacon me crazy. Yeah, I, I went kind of crazy at this one because while my friends were standing in the n- another line, I went and ordered about four or five different items from off of this truck. And I knew I was going to share, but it's just I need to taste this. I need to taste that. And so I gave it to each one of my friends while we were there. But the next one that I personally chose and selected was bacon mac and cheese. So this was creamy uh, creamy, very the cheese was very creamy, macaroni and cheese, and then it was topped with largely chopped bacon. So, again, picture those thick cut strips of bacon that I mentioned before that um, uh, Bacon Me Crazy had from Slap Your Mama dish or side, just sprinkled all over the top of your uh, mac and cheese. And it not even so much, you know, just, oh, a little bit of sprinkle. You had an entire, the entire top was just bacon. That's all you could see. Yes, you really had to kind of dig to get to the mac and cheese, but it was awesome. And for $5, again, prices that they were offering and that they were uh, charging for each of the food um, and dishes that were out there were, were very, uh, were, they were very exceptional. Um we talked about the slap your mama already. That was the first one, but the other one that I felt was was good uh, from that specific truck was bacon cheddar um, tots. That one was five dollars. Again, similar situation with having the um, with the cheese and the bacon, um, but here you're dealing with tots, and I like tots. I do. Uh, I don't know if I really enjoy them with cheese and bacon. But it was good. Um, I think probably what got me is because I was already, I had the bacon. (laughs) I had the bacon mac and cheese. (laughs) I had the grilled cheese. So maybe by the time I got to the bacon cheddar tots, I was probably totted and (laughs) baconed out. (laughs) But I I tell you, um, that is definitely a vendor that I will, if they're, uh, and you could definitely find them by going on Facebook and looking at Bacon Me Crazy Minnesota if they are ever in St. Paul or if I am rolling down the street and I see them I'm sorry I'm stopping so who's ever behind me get out the way (laughs) because I'm going to pull over definitely going to pull over 
again thank you all so much for tuning in to weqi uh, this is the unbuji foodie show and i am your host wesley wright uh, if you have any questions or comments that you want to call in on uh, specifically this segment too uh, about the food trucks and if you had any type of experience uh, being there please call us at 651-200-3479 again that's 651-200-3479 and we will be happy or i <laughs> will be happy to take your call it's just me in here today it's me just me I have a silent guest, but <laughs> you heard that in the background, didn't you? She's not going to be on air. She doesn't want to be. She just wants to. She just wants to observe. <laughs> That's okay. She's very fortunate that I haven't wrangled her in. <laughs> what? She said she's game. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well. Okay, well, see, now that just opened up a whole brand new bunch of stuff that I'm going to talk about right now. So, for one, let me first, let me first introduce Luana Whitmore. Hi. Hello, Luana. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. You know, I so appreciate you being here. I, I'm just going to say that I had to switch up my program a little bit because <laughs> something else happened. Oh, no. And so... I am so glad you're here. Good. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm just actually here listening and watching because my show starts on the 12th of November. Oh, see, so I'm, I'm learning so, oh. and you know watching you use the board and I've dis- discovered that I need a producer. So uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this looks really hard. No, no. <laughs> you know, honestly, believe it or not, it, it's not after you do it probably about three or four times. Okay. But I, I, I admit he did need to be here a bit more often than, yeah, okay. <laughs> than not. <laughs> um, so, yes. But you, you've so sh- <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> you have been here. Um, you've been hearing me talking about um, some of these, you know, the subjects mm-hmm. and you know the food trucks, yeah. as well as how I'm feeling about food okay. deserts and caring about people within the neighborhood and within the community. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? You know. So first of all, I'm I'm really sad that I missed the food truck fair or whatever that was because I it was on my calendar and something else came up and I was all about it (laughs) but we didn't really want to go and now hearing you describe the bacon oh I'm not done I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna describe some more (laughs) and you're gonna be mad at me then you're gonna be mad I'm really I'm really sad about that and I'm actually really happy to hear that you mentioned the food deserts I think that's a really important topic and I'm I'm really happy to see that start to bubble up as something people are paying attention to right um because it is um it is social injustice it is a social injustice that we have complete neighborhoods that don't have access to um, good, healthy food. All they're getting is, you know, chips, canned foods, those kinds of things. All um, pro- things that are processed yep, and so forth. And, and add fast to that. food. Yep, exactly. And fast food. And what, you know, people need to understand, you talked about nutrition. I think that we continue to keep those particular communities in the cycle they're in when their kid when our kids are not um, getting the proper nutrition exactly so they can't learn they can't not sleeping well it's just a big huge it's, cycle yep. it, it's a it's a, a domino effect Absolutely. I mean clearly yep. you know when we have when we talk about nutrition and everything it yes it is about their health mm-hmm. and their food uh, you know the food and so forth but you know food and the way your children are being raised and how they're eating it affects them you know how they deal with on a daily basis (laughs) exactly i mean believe it or not and i think people are listeners out there could admit that when you have food or you don't have food Mm -hmm. your thought the way that you think about things or how you deal with certain um aspects of life is it's affected it really is i mean the stress not having food or worrying about i'm hungry Mm -hmm. i you can't study yeah. and this is not we're not just talking about young ones infants and you know ones that are preschool i mean these we're talking about teenagers uh ones you know going through college high school college and so forth adults yeah. alone so it affects everyone it's just not know, just one area yeah i just know how how um how I am unable to concentrate when I'm dehydrated. Exactly. And I'm grown. So it definitely does span more than just, you know, kids and K through 12. No. And see, I, again, I appreciate that you're mentioning all of that too, because um, it's important to, to, to bring out. Um, I tell, when I talk about on the show that I'm always talking about either going out someplace or enjoying something at a restaurant or whatnot, 
that's not always the case though because i always always bring it back to um you can enjoy cooking your meals at home for your family and it can be just as enjoyable as going out if not more than going to a restaurant because mm-hmm. for me i feel and i was you know they probably are saying you know you talk about this every week because it's important i feel that it's important that when you're cooking at home or with your family it brings people together you could talk about things you could share your experience your children are learning or you could learn from one another if your husband wife you know to get partners whatever you're working together as a unit as a family and supporting your family mm-hmm. you know emotionally and giving them good food right. <laughs> so that's important very basic yes i mean I, basic you're you're tr- you're correct in saying that but it's like it's integral mm-hmm. so yep. I thank agree. you i am pre- i appreciate your input <laughs> thank you <laughs> yay <laughs> well completely impromptu g- i'll well, get off i'll get off of facebook now <laughs> no you can't stay on facebook it's like hey i have a a, a guest a, okay a surprise guest right. <laughs> which is awesome who so knows thank- very little about food uh-uh know, from, no 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 yeah, mm-hmm. my, you know, kind of culinary art standpoint oh my goodness <laughs> i just want you to know when you do remember when we first yeah, met yeah, okay yeah. And you told me fat chance. Yes. Yeah. Did you go? Yeah. <gasps> okay. So they were the first ones okay. I went to. <laughs> okay. And man, it was amazing. Yeah. They, they had and Mr. Um, uh, ben Do- uh, Dosman. Ben mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was awesome gentleman. He yes. came out and. I of course, like I said, I don't go in there and be like, hey, I'm your unbusy foodie. <laughs> we, I went in there very unassuming okay. and I appreciated the fact that, you know, I, I ate my food and everything. And then I said, hey, by the way, you know, to their manager, I said, hey, by the way, you know, I have a food show that's in you know East St. Paul, whatever. And I just wanted to, to let you all know, I'm, I'm going to really talk about my food experience. I enjoyed Great. it so much. And, you know, I just want to let you know the food was amazing yeah. it was good it was so awesome huge portions right two hands <laughs> holding <laughs> a sandwich <laughs> and and one of the things they pride themselves on um is the customer service yes. right? so someone coming out asking you how your meal was you know and it may be the manager maybe one of the owners i mean and it's just you know this couple is i, I consider and they're actually at least one of them is going to be on my show because i consider them to be the best kept secret in entrepreneurship in the twin yes, cities so exactly. they're really doing great things yep and, uh and the, so the manager's like, oh, that's cool. Hold on a minute. Let me go get the manager. I was like, I mean, the owner. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> not a problem. And he came out, sat down with us and talked with me for, a, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes and everything. I mean, I re- everyone had, you know, they're busy. They're doing. But the time, the fact that he took the time to come out and, you know, I said that he appreciated the fact that I didn't come in like, hey, you know, I'm <laughs> such and such, and yeah, I'd like that and that and such. And, oh. yeah. People are going to listen to you because of you come in just as a regular, right. a regular person, and talking about the food experience, and that's really what I did. Mm-hmm. So from that time period on, I was like, see, because he asked, well do we know one another do we know somebody i was like well luana whitmore okay. suggested and he was like oh okay <laughs> i was like yes exactly and so i had a friend with me and he was enjoying the food just as much so yeah, i'm excited that you're gonna have one of them on mm-hmm. uh, on your show so that's gonna be awesome i am looking for he offered to come in uh, we just because of scheduling i haven't had the opportunity to have him on but i am looking forward to uh one going back and uh visiting um, his the sandwich shop right. um, because they have uh, yeah they have they're serving oxtail and mm. greens and chicken I'm like <laughs> I need to go back yeah they have they yeah, they've completely expanded the menu beyond sandwiches now yes. they're doing soul food dinners Friday night and all day Saturday so. exactly mm-hmm. yep. and uh, I'm, I'm happy for it. Uh, it's the little things that please me. So when when I saw their Greens. sign, well, that. But I just saw their sign, their re- actual sign. Yep. Yep. You know, they had a banner at first, and I was like, still, it's you know, you could know that they're there, but they have a sign now, so it's like they're a permanent fixture. Yeah, yes. absolutely, absolutely. So, 
Yeah, he's going to be on the show not only talking about the restaurant and the other businesses and they have a non-profit and all kinds of things going on. Oh, wow. But he's really going to be talking about, you know, kind of how to spot trends in the industry. Okay. And how he knew where to put that restaurant okay. for it to be successful. So, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That That's going to be interesting to hear. I'm looking forward to your show. I'm so excited for you. I'm excited, too. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Oh, don't be. <laughs> you know, natural. I'm, used to doing, I'm used to doing a podcast. I can edit the heck out of a, out of a podcast you know, <laughs> and make it just perfect in the end so this is all live this is new to me so. oh well, well awesome thank you so much yeah. I appreciate that all the input and, and everything but yeah so what, what, when is it November 12th yes Saturday November. Uh, okay good <laughs> what, what time at you know? noon right after well closely uh, hour, after yeah, mine hour after yours, yeah. well you'll be we'll probably see each other because I'll be in here doing stuff anyway back to food <laughs> back to food back to food <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I got a little excited because she started talking about her show, and then I'm like, I want to hear more about it. And then I started talking about Fat Chance because that's what we, yeah. you know, we kind of, you know, we talked about food, and she's like, Oh, hey, you need to go there. Uh, that was that's a story that I tell a number of people mm-hmm. because if you remember, we were uh, sitting in down at uh, Dayton's Bus Community right. Council, mm-hmm. and you had mentioned, and then you, they, you said something to the effect of, Oh, but that's out in Brooklyn center and then the program manager and i think another one of the uh i think a consultant Mm -hmm. or uh, she mentioned is it black owned yes yes. (laughs) and he's like she's like i'm bougie foodie get on it (laughs) i was like okay Okay. (laughs) i'm there no problem (laughs) oh man that has been a really great experience because to i think they you know realizing that it's not Yes, the East Side of St. Paul is important, and that's what we're really focusing on or trying to focus on in different areas and whatnot. There's still so many. I haven't got, believe me, I've been on the air for what, maybe about 12 weeks or so? A while. A while but it's, I haven't gone to all of these restaurants that are out there. So it's amazing. But uh, you bring in the aspect of is black owned or whatnot, you really have to kind of like spread your wings yeah, out a little sure. bit more rather than just saying, okay, we can only concentrate on on this area mm-hmm. otherwise i'd be you know going back to the same restaurants yep, and so forth but i have been finding some amazing places and so and and whatnot um that are black owned mm-hmm. um been going out i even did one for well work suggested well i suggested one for a work um function that we were doing okay. and black owned barbecue and raved because I had gone there just to, you know, say, hey, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to have this place of barbecue. I was like, oh, man, this is so good. I have to tell somebody. I <laughs> and so when they came to me and were like, hey, you know, you know, they found out that I have a radio show. And okay. so when they f- came to me and said, hey, can you suggest something? Uh, 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 no, I already know. <laughs> no question. That's what you that's how, how you get. I can suppose you know people start to know you because Absolutely. you start making these suggestions and Absolutely. so forth. Anyway, again, steered totally far away, but I'm coming We're back around. Yeah. We're still talking about food, <laughs> but I still want to get back to the um, the food trucks. Okay. So, you know, there were again there were so many, um, many others that were there. Um, are, how familiar are you with food trucks? I mean, so I have worked downtown for oh, a long okay. time, so I I know the food trucks that are there, like off of Marquette's, and you know, I all call that. that the food truck parade, right? <laughs> exactly. So I know all of those guys. I I kind of wish, but I live in Eden Prairie, I so see. you know. But um, yeah, I am familiar with them. Nice. Well, it's, uh, see, I can't keep staring. I'm still talking about food trucks, though. Yes. So this is just a side note, n- n- steering away for momentarily from. <laughs> Battle of the Food Trucks. Uh, see, it excites me to talk about it because it's only this weekend, though. It's a pilot program, so I think I put it on my Facebook page. There are about, I'd say, at least a good 10 to 15 food trucks that are going to be out there mm-hmm. from on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 p.m. Okay. to 3 a.m. Where is this? Three? Downtown. Oh. Downtown. This weekend. Th- this weekend only. This is a pilot program. Okay. So the city of Minneapolis is actually um, doing this program to see if this is going to be something that they could continue on. Oh, uh, wait a minute. That now. is brilliant. Right? Like at the bar? Uh, uh, that is brilliant. You realize how much, it, I mean, it's going to get, 
it I it has to do well. Yeah. It really has to do well because people I think the food trucks, even if they and the thing about it is that the city has cordoned off a specific area. So it's not like people can really drive up to the food trucks okay. or to that area. Okay. You the only groups or the vehicles that are there, Lyft, Uber and I think uh, I think taxis can okay. go to that. It's a restricted area. You oh, can't drive in it. Okay. But they are going to be, and oh my goodness, I will there I, be seating? And I don't. Well, I don't okay, think so there's going to cool. be any okay. type of seating. I think it's just going to be you know uh, specific food trucks that are out there, and um, I'm going to try to see if I could. So I would while you look that list, up, yeah. I would have loved that. So last was it when when was this? This week actually, I went to see Love Jones the musical. Okay. And afterwards, I was hungry, and I would have loved to have been able to go not just to a, like a sit down restaurant or whatever, but just go run up to a food truck and grab something it, before I went to my car. You exactly. Know, that would have been awesome. Exactly. Been so you know, like for today, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping all about it. It's the excitement of talking about this stuff. We're still talking about food trucks, but yeah. she mentioned that she and I'm like, oh, crap, I got to mention that. So for today, just anyone that's interested, again, as I was telling um, Ms. Whit- Ms. Whitmore, Miss or Ms. Uh, Miss, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Ms. Luana? Yeah. yeah Is that just, good? Just Luana. Sorry. <laughs> never, I'm trying to be very Not married, never everything. married, that's but okay. I am old, so does that make me a Miss? Whatever, old. <laughs> I don't believe that. Um, Ferrell's Euros Brava oh my goodness see I'm about to talk about Del Sur uh, Empanada uh, New Bohemia Purple People Feeder Fabled Rooster Habaneros Tacos Whole Soul Lavender and Sage I have heard of them I don't remember where though and then lastly Gastro Truck so those are the uh, food trucks that are going to be there today and again that's going to be from 11pm to 3am you heard me not yeah (laughs) 11 p.m to 3 a.m so all you folks that are out there that hey i have the munchies you know getting out you know we had some drinks or at a you know at a a little adult spot Mm -hmm. you know partying it up a little bit uh i don't want to go down i mean there's not going to be a restaurant that's going to be open really now right you know so hey food trucks so you have a plethora of food trucks that are going to be available there. Uh, that's going to cycle. So yesterday was a different group. I think it was probably one or two that were different as of yesterday, uh, like Sasquatch sandwiches. They were there yesterday, but um, it's going to again cycle tomorrow as well. So you still have an opportunity to participate or go and and you know, go out to those food trucks. But I want to talk to you about Del Sur Empanadas. Del Sur Empanadas was uh, was awesome. It was perfect. They are Argentinian um, cuisine. They, the empanadas that I had, and they offer empanadas and lomitas. I forgot to find out what lomitas are, but I think it's kind of a sandwich. But we're talking about the empanadas right now. Sorry, Del Sur. Um, they offered beef, uh, which had uh, onions, red peppers, um, potatoes, and green onions. Uh, there was barbecue um, chicken uh, em- empanada, which had onions, barbecue sauce, and carrots. Mm, that uh, sounds good, right? It was delicious. It was so good, and it was it was tender. And the empanadas they were they were baked, so they weren't deep fried or anything, okay. and they. <laughs> I think it was so, such a unique touch that they had a stamp of their logo, if you would, and what type it was on the empanada. Oh, in the dough. Yes, oh, in the cute. dough itself. Um, but they also offered spinach, uh, a spinach empanada, which had feta cheese, uh, sautéed onions, and mozzarella. And the last one was a ham and cheese, uh, which was a cheese blend, premium ham, and then oregano. And I believe, if I remember the price, I think it was like $6. It may have, I think it may have, it may have been bad. less than that because they were, it was a really great size. Uh, and they offered also a chimichurri sauce to go along um, with it as well. Man, I'm telling you, I <laughs> it, it fathoms me uh, how, you know, being a foodie going out and experiencing all these variety of types of foods there's still one more that i want to talk about but all these types of foods and 
it's hard for me to just say, oh, I'm going to take a bite of this. Oh, I'm going to take a bite of that one. Mm-hmm. And then either throw it away <laughs> or I, I can't do that. I mean, I, I do you like know. leftovers? Are you like I love okay. leftovers. So I don't have a problem. So if you, I will take something. I will take something home and make something totally different out of oh, leftovers. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, so I, I have to get into that mode and really have to tr- train myself. You can't eat the whole thing, man. You can't. <laughs> Even though it's good. <laughs> it's amazing. You can't have all of it. Just take a bite. Know what your purpose is. And you're you're trying to let people experience or give people the experience of what this type of food and mm-hmm. how it tastes. And yeah, I'm sorry, but it, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> <laughs> there, like I said, there's one more that I want to talk about, which is uh, El Hiberito. And El Hiberito, again, another food truck. Um, they are Puerto Rican, so they're serving Cuban food. Uh, and I love Cuban food. And even though mi español es muy mal and y poquito, y muy poquito uh, I'm going to try to say some of these or one or two of these that I had while I was there. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Um, it's called uh, Rienes de, de Papa. So that is stuffed uh, deep fried potatoes, t- potato balls. And man, uh, and they serve, they give you two. It was like five dollars. And these things are like bigger than I'm just going to use for reference. If you know the size of pool, you know, cue balls. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that is the size. <laughs> I mean, it's bigger than that. Let me just wow. put it that way. Okay. And two for five dollars. I oh, was wow. like. Y'all are trying to kill people. <laughs> I'm going to eat them. I'm going to eat them. I'm going to eat them. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Um, very moist on the inside. And it, I, it's an art to it because it's perfectly round. I'm quite sure they just simply drop them in, you know, the oil or, or whatnot and get that crispness on the outside. Um, there's It's very soft because it's potatoes on the inside. But then still in the middle, there is that. Uh, I think it's either pork or chicken, which mm. was just like a that tr- sounds amazing. It was a treat. It was just an utter treat to have. The next one was, uh, yeah, see, I'm having trouble. <laughs> Sorellitos con queso. I didn't pronounce that right, but <laughs> sorellitos con queso, which is corn fritters with cheese. <laughs> yeah. So, my friends out there that are his- Hispanic, Mexican, Latin, I. I Lo siento. And and ironically enough, we're right across the street from the Mexican consulate. I, I, so. I know. I'm looking right at him or whatever. So it's like, man, they're probably wondering, who is this guy in this booth? Tell him he's not pronouncing no it correctly. Speaking, right? I know. Exactly. I'm trying to be, you know, all around happy with this and everything. So, hey, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, again, those are the food trucks. And I know I said I was going to talk about who I thought won. I didn't. Um, I, I'm sorry that I. I don't think I missed any calls, but maybe I was yammering too much. <laughs> <laughs> Phone's right here. <laughs> but uh, again, if you all have any questions regarding the show, uh, what we've talked about on the show, feel free to give me a call. Leave me. Uh, well, give me a call. Uh, you could send me an email <laughs> at the unbougie foodie at gmail.com again the umbougie foodie at gmail.com or leave a f- uh, message on my facebook page or comment uh feel free and subscribe to and be a friend we, we want you to talk about food along with us um i didn't tell you the one that i thought won because there are so many others and i didn't get a chance to go to all of these different places west indies soul food i don't i'm quite sure you've had yeah, them they've before been around for a long time. I'm like come on now i feel kind of biased because i love them <laughs> and I, I you know I, i'm kind of whatever <laughs> i'm like man i gotta choose <laughs> There were a few others. Um, I I mentioned before, original Hockey Moms brownies. Man, I'm telling you, uh, you ladies that are there uh, providing this dessert, this big, this is not a a dig on them. I'm just going to call it a big block of heaven. (laughs) Big block of heaven. Yes. Uh, Yeah. It was wonderful. I only had a small piece because someone was standing in line in front of me and they're I said, hey, that looks good. And she turned around and said, would you like a piece? I was like, 
Oh, yeah. And I wasn't even in line for the brownies. We were in line for something <laughs> else. And she had come over from the line, another line. Only her, in Minnesota. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. But, man, there were other food trucks. Top Boss. Top Boss is very popular. And I've seen it before. And, of course, it, as the name moniker says, there he's boss of tops. He really is. Uh, Chicks on Wheels. Up and Smoke Catering. Curbside Chicken. Um, soaring Boar. I did not have any. I'm not sure what product or what uh, dishes they offered there. I have to look them up on Facebook or online and see what else they offer because um yeah there was just so many uh people were friendly i appreciate the fact that you know people were willing to share i was like <laughs> clearly this is different because <laughs> i'm not used to this and you know i'm sorry you know mother's always telling me don't just share from anybody and can't just eat from anybody and i'm like okay well anyway you know we are coming to the end of the hour and the end of my show. I want to thank you so much, Solana, for being here. I appreciate it. It of was course. it was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> uh, I know that you were here to observe, but oh my goodness, I think I, I hope you had a good time. I here. did. I did. Good. I'm glad. And I am so looking forward to your show. Do you know what the name of your show is before we close? The Ask Luana Show. That's it. Same oh. as the podcast. So. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And that is going to be November 12th on Saturday at 12 p.m. Yeah. So uh, definitely. Definitely make sure you all tune in. She is going to be our one of our newest show hosts uh, here um, on WEQY. Again, the voice of the East Side. I am Wesley Wright, uh, your unbougie foodie. Again, thank you so much for being here. And as always, as I like to end and remind everyone, you know, don't let anyone try to tell you what type of foodie you are. You know, because really it is all about the food. Until next time, folks, peace.